Comedy Crow back again with another pickups video. It has been quite a while since the last pickup video. Uh, I looked it up. I think the last one was about three months ago. Uh, that was back in April. And it's not like I haven't been picking up stuff, but I just haven't been picking up a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but yesterday I went to the Video Game Summit. That was, uh, this time it was in Villa Park at the Odium Expo. This Video Game Summit has been kind of changing locations, um, you know, trying to find the right location. It, it was at this, I can't remember actually the name of the place it was at before for the few years that I was actually going to it, uh, but I know they had some problems with the management, and so last year they had started to ch check out other venues. And I, the venue they were at last year was actually, I think, a little bit too small. I mean, this is a small event, but the, the location they were at last time, um, I, can, I can't remember where exactly that was, but... Um, it's all within the same kind of area, but uh, that wasn't that great. The parking really was kind of bad. Uh, but this one at the Odium Expo, they had a bigger room. I'm gonna. Sh I, I took some video of it with my phone. I didn't take my camcorder because I knew that there wasn't gonna be that much to film. But uh, we had there's booths all around the room. I mean, it was a pr pretty big room. And then kind of in the middle, we had some a couple more booths and then some areas where people had brought some games. Uh, and systems to play. I mean, I saw Laser Active there. Um, you know, not not nearly as big as the Midwest Gaming X, uh, Classic, but um, you know, I, it was some place to go. You know, the, the admission was only ten dollars, and uh, I spent a couple hours there with my wife. Uh, it, it opened at like uh, ten a.m. Uh, Saturday, and it, it ended at either six or seven. I'm not sure which it ended at, but. I, I showed up afternoon, stayed there for two or three hours, you know, checked out a lot of the booths multiple times, and um, then kind of, uh, kind of just left. Um, but I, I did pick up some other stuff outside of the video game expo over the past three, uh, couple months. I'm not going to show any of that stuff here. I'm going to keep building that stuff up for a while. It's mostly PS4 stuff. So if anybody's worried over you know, some of the videos that I've made saying, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going on to Steam or whatever. I have bought some PS4 games. Uh, you can, I, I, I'm going to wait to get some more stuff before I do another video. So, and also, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do another, um, I might not do another pickup video until I'm done with the Pinball FX2 stuff. Um, so it might be a couple of months away, but who knows? I'll make it up as I go along, just like I am now with no script. <laughs> anyway, um, so I did pick up eight games, but I did pick up some other stuff while I was there. And the first thing I'm going to show off here that I, I did get is this pop vinyl figure. Not game related at all, but this pop vinyl. Um, I have been collecting pop vinyls. Uh, me and my wife have been. Uh, we've got a kind of a ridiculous collection now of 245. I think that includes this one. Uh, but you're going to see some footage. Uh, I just took a little bit of, uh, earlier of uh, the wall that I've gotten. You may have noticed if you've been watching my gameplay videos of Pinball Arcade and Pinball FX2 that the wall kind of uh, <laughs> just kind of changed all of a sudden. That's because I took down the shelves that were there so I would have more spots to put this this pop vinyl stuff on the wall. Uh, kind of a weird addiction kind of thing. Who knows if I'll get sick of it over time um, and want to sell them. But there are a couple of them that I really, really like. And if you were to ask me what my personal favorite is right now. It's not a rare one or a uh, you know even, even an expensive one, but my favorite has got to be Beef Squatch from Bob's Burgers. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on. I did get some. Uh, I picked up some of these last year. So if you remember my last year's video game summit, and I just dropped one. I picked up these. Um, kind of be hard to show, but you'll see it in the insert. These are some. Um, bottle caps uh pepsi bottle caps from japan uh mario brothers versions of them so these would sit on the top of um i guess this was a promotion where they would have pepsi they, these would sit on top of the the pepsi bottles and you try to collect them all there were about 30 of them uh last year there was a vendor selling them and uh what he would do i think his brother lived in japan and he would collect them and then ship it to him to sell nothing wrong with that these were like three dollars each I mean, it's nothing we'd see here, I don't think. Um, I picked up five last time. This time I picked up seven. But what was funny was I could not remember which one 
uh, which ones I actually had, and uh, I actually wound up picking one twice. So uh, this is this beetle one. I actually picked this one. I had this one already. Um, so I think I'll just put the take this one to work. I mean, uh, the, the rest of these will go up on the shelf with the rest of them. Uh, so we have 11. Yeah, 11 now out of the 30. I know I'm not planning on collecting them all. I just think they're pretty cool. Another thing I picked up was this slick stick. I already had two of these, but as I was walking around, I saw, you know, there's always these bins full of controllers, and I saw this happen to be sitting on top. I picked it up, kind of like, uh, tried it out, and it felt pretty good. Um, I, guess I said, hey, how much is this? Because I didn't see any prices on anything. You know, he's like, three bucks. I'm like, three bucks, that's perfect. Here's three bucks. Um, tried this out, actually, on some of the games I picked up. And um, the controller portion works really, really good. The button is a little bit... Um, it seems like sometimes you have to push it in harder. Uh, but the great thing about these old controllers like this, it's no problem to take these apart and uh, fiddle with them to try to get them to work the way you want them to. Uh, barring that, I do have another slick stick where the controller portion kind of grinds. So, you know, if anything, I could a a just swap out parts, too, and get an, an awesome controller. So I have three of these now, but, um, yeah, I love this. These are my favorite controllers. I used to use these as a kid, and um, these are still my favorite controllers because they're so tight. There's not much movement involved to uh, hit the directions, and that's what I really like about this. All right, this is kind of game-related, but uh, one of the booths, uh, well, several of the booths were selling uh, loose manuals, and I haven't quite gone through and made myself a list of, um, okay, these are the manuals I'm missing, so when I encounter a situation like that, I could re you know, re uh, look at my list and say, oh, yeah, I am missing this manual, and this manual, and this manual. But uh, I saw a stack of TurboGrafx-16 manuals, and I knew that there were some games that I had um, the car only the card, nothing else, and I saw this one, Space Harrier. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't think I have the manual for that because I, I know that I've got a label printed up for uh, Space Harrier. Hey, how's it going? And um, so, you know, the manual's $5. I was like, okay, yeah, $5, I'll buy it. I'm pretty sure I don't have it. I looked it up in my phone even, and my phone even said that I didn't have the case. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, I don't have the manual. But here's the thing, is I got home, I actually do have the manual. It's just the case I have for this is missing the back sticker. So I printed up a label on the side and I forgot that I actually had the manual. So now I have two Space Harrier manuals. So what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, the other, the, that same booth, I bought three 20, Atari 2600 games from that booth. Um, well, I almost lost. I picked up one and then the balance shifted on the pile. Uh, but here's one I bought. This is uh, Sprint Master, uh, cartridge only. Really good looking cartridge. I remember seeing this and I was like, wow, it's like Super Sprint on the Atari 2600. And that's pretty much what it is. You've got a selection of uh, nine tracks to choose from. And for each of the nine tracks, you could choose between Blacktop, uh, Dirt Road, or Ice. So there's a whole lot of selection in there. You could race against a computer or against, um, like I, I'm doing in the footage, you could race against a computer or I guess you could play as two player. This game seems like it would be more fun as a two player game because the computer really acts like a pace car. Almost, uh, but you still have to beat them. Uh, as you drive around, there's uh, two power-ups you may encounter. I think the, there's a red block that's speed, which I learned to avoid because once, if I, once I get the speed one, I just find myself driving into walls all the time. And then the better of the two is traction, which lets you turn a little bit faster. But, um, you know, it's not the greatest game. I mean, we've had Indy 500, and uh, I think there was another game on the Atari 2600 just like this. This is just the... the, the um, this newest version of it because this game came out in 1988 and you think about it that's kind of ridiculous <laughs> you know what uh, the NES had already been out for three years and they were still making Atari 2600 games uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just glad to have this in my collection because this is a fun game the only thing that would have made this better is if it had used the paddle controllers rather than using the, the go jo joysticks so uh, I think there might even be a hack of this where they've changed it to use the paddle controllers instead of the, um, the joysticks, but this is the original version. So I am actually glad to pick this up. Uh, I say this was five bucks, and I say that Space Area Manual was five bucks. Those were the original prices he had on it. Uh, everything I bought from him totaled about $35, and he dropped it down to 30 So these four items here cost me $30. <laughs> so 
I'm going to show off here is um, got Commando for the Atari 2600. Again, this is just a loose cartridge. The the cartridge itself basically has the, the glue problem. You get really bad because uh, you can see it really seeping through here. Uh, but I think this was like, he had just marked it about $8, 7 or $8. I can't remember exactly how much. But um, I remember seeing some footage of this and it didn't look bad at all. And I popped it in and I played it. And you know what? It's totally not bad at all. Um, you run around, you shoot guys. Um, I don't know how effective the grenades are in this game because if you think about it you're shooting and then you have grenades the Atari 2600 controller has only one button what I think you do and what the way I was doing is you just hold down the button for a long time until he shoots a grenade uh, but it automatically travels to the top of the screen and it only takes care of what's at the top of the screen and my air conditioning just kicked on so I don't know if you're hearing any interference for that but um, it's just kind of fun to run around. It's like shooter, uh, you know, run around shooting guys on the 2600, and for that it works, even if you ignore the grenades completely. Um, so, you know, not definitely not arcade perfect conversion, uh, not even close to the quality of the NES version. I mean, this didn't come out till this is like 19... Uh, I'm pretty sure this was like a 1987 game for the uh, Atari 2600, but... Um, yeah, I think by itself, on its own merits, it's it's actually pretty decent. Uh, let's move on. This was the last game I bought at his booth. Actually, it's the first one I saw and picked up, and I was like, I have to have this. Um, and then on my way home, I was thinking, wait a minute. I This isn't what I was thinking. But anyway, I picked up uh, a box copy of Summer Games for the Atari 2600. Now, right away when I see this, I, I go, I see, and I'm like, oh, I hope this is the Commodore 64 version, because I want to get the Commodore 64 versions of uh, Summer Games, Winter Games, and um, World Games. And I think there's even a couple more after that, like uh, uh, Summer Games 2. I, I might be mistaken about that, but when I was a kid, we, we used to play all the time Summer Games, Winter Games, and World Games. So I'm kind of on a lookout for those um, Commodore 64 games. In fact, I was kind of asking around, saying, you know, 60, uh, you have Commodore 64 game, you have Commodore 64 game. Um, nobody really had any Commodore 64 games. I saw one, and it was a box copy of uh, Street Fighter 2 for the Commodore 64. Uh, but it was without the manual. It did have the disc inside of it. I wasn't really interested in that because that that's not something I played as, as a kid. It's very much... Street Fighter 2 came out, we had the Super Nintendo. I mean, we were already way past Commodore 64. So I didn't I wasn't gonna buy that. I mean it was a it was a decent price too, I think. I was like fifteen or twenty bucks. But I was like, I'm just not gonna shell out the money for that. And that was like the one Commodore 64 game I saw there. Um, unfortunately, I didn't even see any Atari 8-bit computer games because I was asking around for those too. And uh, there was a guy last year that had a whole bunch of them. I was kinda hoping to see the same thing again. Nope, not this year, but um, <laughs> Let's get back to summer games. It this does have uh, you know it's the cartridge. It does have the manual in there, and I'm glad it has the manual in here because I was trying to play this uh, last night, and um, I had to refer to the manual to figure out how to do some of the um, events. And in fact, the gymnastics one <laughs> that's like a whole page of text explaining how to do. It. I was like, forget that. I'm not. I'm not going to figure that out. Uh, but the reason I bought this is because I was like, oh, I have winter games for the Atari 2600. I need summer games. And then on my way home, I'm thinking, wait a minute. I have winter games on the Atari 7800, not the 2600. I sh and I don't know. All right, had a little bit of a camera malfunction there. But as I was saying, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my point was that uh, yeah, I don't know if there was uh, Summer Games that was released in the U.S. for the Atari 2600. All I know is that the, the version of Winter Games I have for the Atari 700 kind of sucks. There's only four events. This actually has eight events in it, and it's an Atari 2600 game. It's kind of ridiculous, but some of the games are kind of fun, like the Hurdles. I get I can imagine playing that against somebody and having a good time with that. Uh, some of them are really dumb, like the swimming one. I don't like the swimming one. Didn't like the gymnastics ones. That was overly complicated. Um, but the other ones I think are pretty fun, especially when you're, you know, playing against somebody at the same time. Uh, so yeah, summer games, and that's what I bought at that booth. There was another booth. Oh, this was the booth I actually bought the, uh, the Pepsi, uh, Mario Brothers toppers. I wound up buying a 
Super Famicom game. This is P-Man. <laughs> and I looked it up like pretty quickly just to see, and it looked like a something I could play without knowing Japanese. And that's right. You could play. It's like a caveman game. You run around. You hit stuff. You get... You get... Um, you know, a hang glider at some point. You get upgrades to your weapon at some point. Uh, pretty, and you could jump on the enemies to bounce higher, uh, but you do have to club them to actually eliminate them. Uh, this game was released in the U.S. Uh, as Prehistoric Man, but this is the Japanese version. It's just P-Man. I got, and you know, this was eighteen dollars. I got did get a couple bucks off of this because I did buy all the Pepsi bottle things, but. Um, I didn't, I didn't realize this was released in the U.S., and if I had realized it, I don't know if I would have bought it. I'm kind of, you know, if I'm the fence on this one, if I do ever run across Peter Stark Man and get it, I might wind up reselling this one. There is some text uh, in the game as you run across characters, and I have no idea what they're saying. I don't know what kind of clues or hints they may be telling me, but for the time being, this will stay in my collection. Um, it's P-Man. Moving on, um, there got to be a point at the show in which I was like, oh yeah, I haven't looked at my, my list. Let me look at my list. And it's like, oh, um, there's a Nintendo 64 game on my list because, and, and as I really look through these, I kind of a, don't look through the NES games. I don't look through the Super Nintendo games. I don't look through the Nintendo 64 games because to me, I have all the games I really need. But then I realized, oh wait, there's one six, Nintendo 64 game I'm looking for and I did find it there. And that's Excite Bike 64. Uh, $8 I paid for this, which I'm actually shocked that I, you know, <laughs> uh, Nintendo 64 games usually seem to go for a premium price. I don't know. Uh, so to me, I always see them for like no less than $15. Uh, and it didn't even, doesn't even matter what game it is. But the, to find this for $8 in a game I was actually looking for, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I like the original Excite Bike a lot on the Nintendo. It's one of my favorite games on the original NES. So uh, I did see some footage of somebody playing this, and you know, I was like, you know what? I need to get the sequel to that game. Uh, I played it a little bit. <laughs> it is very, very more complicated than um, it, it takes a lot longer to get used to than the original one because you've got to hit the shoulder button to slide. Um, it just like the original one, you can't bump people from behind. You'll fly off your bike, but. In a more satisfying twist, you can like kind of do exactly the same thing in the original game, and that's kind of you know turn right in front of somebody so they hit you and bump them off their bike. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it does have the overheat system, the one button that's normal, and the one button that uh, pushes your bike even harder than where you can overheat. I didn't really notice anything about tilting forward or back for the hills. I'm sure that's there. I just didn't come across uh, as it was necessary. Uh, takes a while to get used to, but I am glad I have this in my collection now. I do like the Excite Bike games. So, of course, I had to pick this one up. Uh, next up, we have a... Um, okay, this was kind of funny. It's Sonic Riders. I saw this on a stack at, at one guy's booth, and I, had, I, I didn't know anything about this game. So I picked it up, and it didn't have a price on it. I'm like, I'm like hey, how much are you asking for this? And he goes, $50. I'm like, $50? That's, well, actually, I didn't say $50, and that's important to this story. I said, well, that's too much for me, and I put it back. And as soon as I put it back, he's like, oh, oh okay, $10. I'm like, wait a minute, how do you go from $50 to $10? And that's when I realized I misheard him the first time. He said $15. And I was like, oh, yeah, $10, I'll take it. Because this does have um, it does have everything in it. It's got the manual, it's got the game. And I like the racing games, um, especially I've been playing uh, Sonic All-Stars Racing, not the first one, not the Transform one. I've been playing that on Steam uh, recently, and uh, I, I was like, I, you know, these Sega racing games, I'm going to try it out. And uh, for, yeah, $10, absolutely. I probably wouldn't have even bought it for 15 but me mishearing what he said actually got me a, a bigger discount. Um, but this game itself, I don't know, really know how I feel about it. It's like... It's weird, it's like all the characters are on hoverboards, and it's like Mario Kart, but with hoverboards. Uh, and so it's, it, it seems really complicated. I didn't go through the tutorial, it's just kind of jumped in it. I, I do like the beginning of the race where you have to charge towards the gate and kind of pass it as close to uh, the time zero as you can. And if, But if you're too early, you get electrocuted and you wind up losing a bunch of time. But... Uh, 
I thought that was clever. There's all these tricks to do. I think the GameCube... There's, this is on Xbox and PS2 as well, but, um, you know, I don't have too many GameCube games, so I'm glad I found this on GameCube. Yeah, very odd game. <laughs> a racing game, but I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, and move on to the next one. This one is actually a Nintendo DS game we get. Um, Super Princess Peach here. This was a game I was actually pretty interested in when it originally came out, but I just really never got around to buy it. Now, like I said before, I'm, I wasn't really looking at NES games or Super Nintendo games or Nintendo 64 games, but the same goes true for the Nintendo DS games. I wasn't really looking at them. It was my wife who actually saw this, and it was like, ooh, Super Princess Peach, I want that. It was $20, um, and I think that's about the same price it goes for on eBay. Uh, I actually checked. And on eBay, I've seen copies sold for between 15 uh, There was actually one copy that sold for 15 We're talking about a complete copy, because this is a complete copy. Um, one copy sold for 15 but most of the other copies sold for $25 or more. So, And I played it a little bit. It's actually a pretty interesting platformer set in the Mario universe. Uh, but Peach has got some different abilities. She can't stomp on the creatures. She does turn them over, and then she can lift them up with her umbrella and throw them. Uh, she's also got this weird ability where her emotions give her different powers. Like, um, there's the joy emotion. If you select that, she can turn into a tornado and float in the air. Uh, when she's angry, she turns into fire, and she can and she burn things. Um, there's the sad. When she's sad, she cries. And that actually makes plants grow. And then there's a third, the fourth one. I'm not really sure what that is because I don't really make it that far in the game where it let me use it. But I'm sure that would change some of the environments to allow you pass or find secret hidden areas or whatnot. And uh, But yeah, this is a really good game from what I played. I only played like 15 minutes of it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a good platformer for the DS. And being a DS game, you could play this on your 3DS as well. And there's one final game and I saved this for last uh, 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 for last on purpose because I if you told me in a million years I would have bought something for this platform at a game show I would have been like yeah, that's impossible that's not gonna happen but I wound up buying a steam game at the video game summit and that is this boot hill bounties now the reason I'm showing a card here is because um, I bought the I bought the game uh, five dollars I bought it for and the guy, I don't know if this was the guy that actually made the game or whatnot, because what he was showing off was a sequel to this game. I think it's Boot Hill Bounties 2. He was kind of showing off the sequel of the game. He was taking pre-orders for Steam for the sequel, but he had this other game, uh, Boot Hill Bounties. The first one came out in October of 2014, I believe. It's a Western RPG, and you don't see too many of those. And it looks like it's in the style of Earthbound. So I was like, they were like, oh, do you want to play it? I was like, no, I already know from what you've told me, I talked to them for a while, that I want to buy it. Um, what it includes, there was two codes on the back of this because there is the main game and then there's uh, an extra DLC pack. Um, what I want to say, the, the, the game itself on Steam, um, original price $8.99, the DLC pack is about a buck. So for the entire game, it's $9.99. But since I bought it the show, he gave it to me for five bucks. I gave him five, it's so odd, paying cash. For a Steam game. I have a $5 bill and I got the card to play the game. Uh, really reminds me of Earthbound. Maybe with a little bit of Fantasy Star in there. Didn't play too much. All I did was uh, go into the barn and kill some rats with a broom. <laughs> uh, but that's the extent of the game I've played. Uh, he said that the game took would take about 10 hours. So it's not a super long RPG or anything. And that's perfect. Because I'm not... I don't know if I'm in... Uh, um, the mode to play a super long RPG. I could sit down and play this one for a little bit on any computer. I, I wonder if it's got the sharing for it, but anyway, even if it doesn't, I could play it. And um, yeah, it's a Western themed one. So you don't see that. And, and uh, the closest thing to a Western themed RPG I played before was Wild Arms. And um, it was Western themed, but it was also kind of steampunk and it had robots in it too. So <laughs> this seems straight up, um, Straight up Western, no frills, and uh, well, I'm looking forward to playing it. So that is it. That's the Video Game Summit. I do have a bunch more PS4 games uh, sitting in the wings that I've been kind of playing. Uh, a lot of them are actually limited run, but some of them aren't. And um, I'm going to save that for the next video. I, I know I've got some other games I want to be buying coming up soon. Um, 
but yeah, again, I don't think I'm going to be getting those for a while, so I wouldn't expect a video on that for quite some time. So, leave it at that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.